What's up, everybody? Bentley Michaels here with another Logic Pro tutorial. Thank you all very, very much for uh, watching the last video. Logic Pro, the pop music fade in, the... Let's dance, do the stuff, and then we'll sing about stuff, and let's dance. I don't know the words. Um, but uh, I got uh, a couple of comments from one, Brendan Ard. It's Brendan space A-R-D. So I'm assuming you're a pirate, Brendan. Brendan Ard. I will go back to that piece of music, which was a, a Macklemore sound-alike type of thing. And I'll, I'll give you a couple a couple more tips and tricks on, on some stuff you can do to, that's very popular in pop music, dubstep, uh, you know dance music, all that sort of stuff. Some stutters, some other types of fade-ins, all, all sorts of crazy stuff you can do. But however, this week, I'm starting a three-part mini-series. Well, that looks like six parts, so three, three-part mini... No, it's four. Three-part mini-series on uh, uh, creating more realistic strings in Logic Pro. I use Logic Pro 9. I haven't upgraded to Logic Pro 10 or Logic Pro X as I'm told that it's uh, being called on the streets, but I'm sure they're very, very similar. So you'll be able to uh, take this uh, information and just sort of, you know, change it up just a tad bit for Logic Pro 10. I don't think they're that different from some of the videos I've seen, except for that dark gray, that super sweet fucking Batman feel of Logic Pro 10. Fuck. Probably going to have to get it. Um, now, I'm I'm very very hample uh hample weird I'm very very happy with the sample see I mixed happy and sample I'm very very happy with the samples that Logic Pro 9 has as far as orchestral strings um you know there's other libraries out there uh Cine strings uh East West they they've got all those have great great sounds um if you can't afford those because they can be spendy if you're just buying the program uh Logic this comes with some uh, great sounding stuff, great orchestral sounds, great synths, great everything. But today we're focusing on the orchestra and uh, we're going to dive right into the strings. So the first, this first video is going to be about making your MIDI sound more realistic. Step one. Uh, we're just going to toy with the MIDI before we add any compression, before we add any uh, um, uh, reverb or anything like that just toying with the MIDI to make the MIDI, you know, breathe and sound like strings. So, why don't we head on over to Logicville? All right, everybody, welcome to Logicville. So here, we're going to work uh, backwards a little bit. So this right up here is the finished product of what we're going to be working on today. Now, it's the first finished product, and if you look at here, it says Scary Quartet Company Logo no FX. So this is before I added any of the uh, compression, any of the uh, uh, reverbs, or uh, any of the modulation with the MIDI. Now this is for a uh, an independent film company who does horror films, and they've got like a 20 second long uh, logo that they put at the beginning of their films, and I was contracted to do it. So let's single out this track right here, and let's listen to the very raw track. <laughs> Okay, so there it is. Now that's the raw track. You, uh, it's good idea. It's got some of that Bernard Herman psycho stuff in it. Um, you know, it's dark. It sounds like it would be something for a scary movie. Now it still sounds fake though. That's the thing. So um, this is it right here. And also, there's some harmonies in there that you're going to hear when I do this part right here with all the sauce on it. Um, there's some harmonies that, that that you didn't hear in that one. So let's listen to the sauced up version. Yeah, and that's what it sounds like with uh with all the with all the extras added to it. So let's go over to our other Logic Pro tutorial. 
Okie dokie, and welcome to the other side of the tracks here in Logicville. All right, now this is the actual session uh, for the piece of music that you guys just heard. Uh, as you can see, looking at all the different MIDI things, you can tell I've already messed around with it. Um, so what we're going to do here we're, is we're going to take a look at the violins. Uh, it's the most prominent part of the whole piece. It's got the most uh, diverse action going on. So... I'm uh, going to go over a few things before we go into our uh, hyper draw down here. Let's just talk about the, uh, the, the little MIDI boxes themselves. Uh, for this first piece right here, uh, single this out here. Very flowy. You get some eighth notes. One and two and three and four and... Okay, so for this part, to get that real flowy sound, especially the long notes, the legato notes, and then these things. Okay, to get a really good sound out of uh, uh, things, there's a couple things you can do with your MIDI here first. Okay, let's make this a little bigger and uh, go this way. Now, one, as you're composing the piece of music, you want to know what it's going to sound like in your head at the end. It can't just be, you know, strings going, going, going. So you you got to know the uh, the the ebb and the flow of it, uh, it how how the finished product's going to sound in your head. I knew what it was going to sound like. So this first part here, we've got sort of uh, mid sounding strings. You know, it's not too loud. Excuse me, not too loud, not too um, not not too aggressive. Just a nice sound, okay? And uh, I use a MIDI keyboard to play everything. And then uh, after I've got my idea down, you know, highlight it all, quantize it to whatever is going to be. And then after you've done that, you know, uh, after you've quantized it all, keep it all highlighted and then just sort of grab it. Because once they're all highlighted, you know, you're going to be able to control everything. So... You just sort of grab it, and if it's like this, that doesn't sound, it'll sound, you know, it'll sound definitely on time, but you want to just drag it over just a little bit over there, so they, uh, so they, you hear that how it kind of overlaps there for a second? If you go for a whole box, it starts to sound like two sort of weird notes being played, and then one drops out, so you just want to, just, just a smidge. Um, so that's... That's going to be one step uh, to do after you've quantized your stuff and, and got your, your, your melody down. Um, the next thing you want to do is, you know, like as I was saying, figure out the figure out the sound, the velocity. What do you want? This part, like I said, I knew I wanted sort of like a down the road. I didn't want it, uh, you know, super quiet or super loud. So I got them all about the same, uh, the same volume here. I'm guessing in, uh, they're all about 74, 75. Uh, what I do for to to help me cut down some time I'll go over here to the velocity tool and it's going to be in the second box here keep the first box on pointer tool because that way when you hit your command key you see the little V pop up now you can all of them super quiet super aggressive right here in the middle and if you want to go through to add a, even even a little bit more distinction, you can go through. I think all of these are are the same. Maybe not. Yeah, there, there's a couple variations. I usually allow like two numbers on either side. So say if my number 75, you know, I can go 73 all the way up to 77, and it gives it a little bit more, you know, of a realistic uh, feel. But for this, I think I kind of just kept it like one on either side of uh, 75. Um, over here, much lower, uh, 70. Whoops, not much lower. Just uh, just a little bit. Just a, a just a little bit softer of a sound, and then for this uh, big grouping of uh, 16th notes here, uh, probably in the early hundreds, I would imagine. Yep. And then over here, I would imagine the 80s. Yep, the 80s. So there we go. Now that I've annoyed you all and hit every damn MIDI thing on here. Um, so you do a little bit of cleanup beforehand with volume and that sort of stuff uh, with all your MIDI boxes because then when you're going to get into the stuff down here in the hyperdraw, 
it gives it uh, I don't know a little bit uh, easier kind of easier to work with it's not all over it's not all over the place up here in the boxes so it's a little bit easier to manage um, now let's go to our our hyper uh, our hyper uh, draw and you didn't see what I did I clicked on this little section right here of three lines it's gonna bring up this first your modulation well I don't know if it'll bring that up but that's what it brings up for me. So we got modulation here. Now, if uh, any of you out there use the MIDI keyboard, uh, you probably have a modulation wheel on it. And you'll notice that if you're playing like with strings, it either gives it just like a super flat feel and you just get the sound of, of, uh, of, the, of, the, uh, of the violin in this case. Or if you put the mod wheel all the way up, you get super vibrato, super sort of tremolo sound with a synth. You know, it can make it way more aggressive if you uh, if you go in. You know, you can create some very interesting dubstep uh, sounds. You know, messing with your modulation as well. Um, but in this case, I I need to have the uh, the strings. You know, not just sound flat. We want to sort of give the illusion of the bow and uh, going across the strings, how a person would play it or a group of people rather. Uh, and, and you know, the, the vibrato of the fingers and all that sort of stuff. So we, we do this with the modulation. Now, as you can tell, I've doubled my tracks. They're about a millisecond sort of off from each other. Uh, and you can tell that I also, I did bigger dips on the, on the top one here. Uh, I'll play the top one. So you can hear the difference. You can really hear the the dips, not only in in sort of uh, volume and and expression, which is coming up next, but you can hear it kind of as, as it as it hits down here in these points. It's a little bit flatter of a sound, and then it starts to raise up and, and have a little bit more of that uh, vibrato to it. Uh, I did, you know, really big dips on this one, and I did smaller dips on this one, um, just to sort of, you know, uh, off, you know, uh, ba balance each other out, you know, just like there'd be a lot of people in the room playing. Everybody's playing the same thing, but they're not quite all playing it the same way. So uh, that's what I did here with the, uh, with the modulation. These numbers also arbitrary to the piece. Like um, I just kind of this is what spoke to me as far as how it made it sound. You know, maybe you want yours crazier sounding or or more subtle. You know, it's it's all up to you. But this is uh this is what I used for this piece. Now, going um. Let's see here. Uh, expression. That's the next thing. Similar to the modulation, you can already see, and I probably did the same. Yep, top one. Now the expression. This is what's really going to give the ebb and flow. Uh, this is where like a lot of the dips come from. Also, um, it can uh, basically it's it's similar to the velocity a little bit in in up here in your uh, in, in your MIDI where you know it's you're getting more out of the instrument. You're getting a harsher tone, that sort of thing. Um, it's 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 a similar thing here with the expression. And that's another good thing to have because, you know, as a bunch of players are playing, you know, their violins, they're all going to play it, you know, once again, they're all going to play it just a little bit differently. So I did I did the, the sort of big drops and dips in this one and the smaller here. Um, now, if we'll listen to the top, the expression is really helping with that soft, soft, loud sort of thing. And then we hear this one. N not as big of, uh, you know, changes, not as big as jumps. But then you add them together. You're starting to get a pretty decent, realistic sounding uh, uh, as far as, as the plane goes with it. Now, uh, here you'll see that I sort of scooped up because it's sort of a it's a, a little crescendo there. So I wanted the sound to come off a little bit more aggressive. Um, and then same here at the end. As that note is being held out, 
you know, it, uh, the expression is getting more intense. Also, a good thing before an end note like that, dive bomb out of those those second to the last notes there, dive down, and then real so it goes away and then really has a great room to crescendo. Subtle, but very effective. Now on this one, you can tell that it's a huge, huge thing. And I actually bring it up on this one to give it a little bit more power and then really drop it down. So let's uh, single this thing out and take a listen. So you really hear the drop off. You really hear, you know, it's almost like they stop playing for a second and then really intensely start uh, hitting those strings. Now, uh, there's one final thing here. We're going to go to volume. Oh, no, not volume. What a... Yep, there it is. Uh, didn't do it on the other one. Interesting. Um, so the volume here, where, um, for the crescendo right here, you can tell that I found my sort of uh, negative 16 dB. That's where I liked it. And then for that crescendo, that adds the extra oomph. Okay, and then you can see it just sort of, you know, by about a dB and a half, it starts to uh, raise up during this... Uh, Massive set of notes, and then slowly, nicely curves up at the end for the for the big crescendo. That's interesting. I didn't do it up here. I wonder what it'd sound like if I did. Um, may have to go back and change that. All right. Now the final key component to doing all of this stuff. It's not just about doing the modulation and the expression. Okay. You'll notice that it's rounded. It's not normally when you're in here playing around with stuff. You see, it makes it like that, okay? So what we want to do, we want to go back over here to our second uh, command click tool section. Automation curve. Okay, I uh, had a little glitch there with the computer. So uh, automation curve tool, that's what you want to select, okay? Now when you use your command key, you'll see that it turns gray. A little bit of a, little bit of a mouse tail there, and you can start curving it out. And you can then curve this one like a spaghetti noodle, or a spaghetti noodle that way. Or you can, you know, it just depends on what you're using it for. As as you can see, I curved it up, and then curved it down. Uh oh, mouse battery's going low. So let's uh, finish this thing up. So uh, that's pretty much everything you guys need. Uh, we need volume, we need modulation, and we need expression. And then uh, if you want to double them, separate them by a couple milliseconds, that helps. And then uh, make sure these are overlapping, the MIDI, and you've got all your velocity set. So, uh, so when you get into this stuff, it really makes a difference once these are, uh, all this sort of stuff up here is set uh, in, in here. There's, it gives it a little bit more of a precise uh, thing to work with so you can make it imprecise. So why don't we go talk to that jerk on the video? And there we have it. That's how you manipulate the MIDI to get it uh, just a little bit more realistic sounding. Uh, join us in part two. Bing! Where we're going to cover uh, reverb and panning. Ooh. All very, very, very important uh, to make your strings sound uh, more realistic. So, until next time, I've been Bentley Michaels. And this... Has been a Logic Pro tutorial. <laughs>